Okay, in this video, we're going to continue talking about inverse functions. In part one, we looked at one-to-one uh, -one functions and finding inverse functions if your function is given by a table, a graph, and a formula. So we're going to talk mainly about form formulas in this in this video. Let, let's let's look at this uh, function given by a formula. Does this function have an inverse? Well, it would be helpful to look at the graph. Uh, the graph looks looks kind of like this. Uh, it turns out you can think of this function as a horizontal shift to the right of 1 over x and also I think there's a vertical stretch there too but it basically looks like 1 over x that's been shifted 3 units to the right but it is 1 to 1 so yes it has an inverse function how would you find f inverse of 2? now remember what f inverse of 2 means? f inverse of 2 is the value of x when y equals 2 isn't it? so well, unless you, uh, we're not finding the inverse function, let's just use the function itself to find it. What you could do is you could set the y-coordinate equal to 2 and find x, right? So then if you, if you do that, you can cross-multiply. You can use the distributive law. Then you can add 6 to both sides and solve for x. You get that uh, x equals 11 halves. So that would be f inverse of 2 would be 11 halves. Nice, huh? Well, let's, let's find a formula for f inverse. We're, we're going to find a formula for the inverse of this function right, right, right here. When you're doing that, it's kind of nice, instead of using the, um, the uh, f of x notation, to write y instead of f of x, isn't it? So go ahead, hit the pause button, see if you, switch, switch x and y, and, and then solve for y, and see if you can find the inverse of this function. Okay, you switch x and y, you should have gotten that. Now when you cross multiply, or over here, you cross multiply, you get this. Use the distributive law, you get this. Add 3x, you get this. Divide by x. So here is the inverse function. f inverse of x is 3x plus 5 over x. Okay, um, let's, let's do this last thing. We were doing this last time as well. Let's uh, use the um, inverse function property and verify that they're inverse functions. Remember what you can do to show they're inverse functions, or in other words, to check your work? What you can do is you can um, find f of f inverse of x and hopefully get x, and similarly f inverse of x and hopefully f inverse of f of x and also get x. So what's f of f inverse? Well, we just found f inverse of x is 3x plus 5 over x, so this is f of this. Remember what f is? f is 5 over x minus 3. So you're plugging in 3x plus 5 over x in for x right here. So when you simplify it, you're going to have to get the common denominator. You're going to have to multiply this, this on top and bottom by x. So this is what you get on the bottom. Now notice the 3x's cancel. So you just have 5 on the bottom over x. When you flip over the bottom one and multiply, the 5's cancel, so you have x. See if you can do the same thing for, for this, this one. See if you can uh, see if you can do this on your own. See, see if you can uh, find f inverse of f of x and see if you get x back. Okay, f inverse of f of x. Remember, f of x is 5 over x minus 3, so this is what we have, f inverse of this. What does f inverse do? Oops, right here, I guess. f inverse takes whatever you give it, it multiplies by 3, adds 5, and you divide by that thing you give it, so you get this. Get the common denominator on the numerator, which is x minus 3, so you multiply this by x minus 3 over x minus 3. Then here you get 5x minus 15. So uh, on the numerator of the numerator, the 15's cancel. So you just have 5x over x minus 3. And then when you flip over the bottom one, the x minus 3's cancel, so do the 5's. So it works, you get x. Okay, let's keep on going. On this next one, let, let's keep on asking the, this question. How about this function? Does this function have an inverse? The answer is no. Uh, if you were to graph this function, it's clearly not one-to-one. -one. Uh, it fails the horizontal line test, which means you can draw a horizontal line that hits it more than once, right? Okay, we're done with that one. How about this one, though? On your homework, you might see this. When they put down this domain restriction here, we're only looking at this graph when x is greater than or equal to zero. So the graph looks like, like this. This is what the graph lo looks like. You're only looking at the graph when x is greater than or equal to zero. So this left half gets gets chopped off. Is this is this graph one to one? The answer is yes. So it passes the horizontal line test. So what I want you to do now is um, hit the pause button and see if you can graph the inverse function on the same coordinate system. 
Okay, uh, the way you graph the inverse function, remember, is to plot some points. You, you, you pick some points on f and you switch the coordinates. 0, negative 3 becomes negative 3, 0. 1, negative 2 becomes negative 2, 1. 2, 1 becomes 1, 2. So if you continue doing that and connect the dots, you get the graph of f inverse. Remember to, to notice that the graph of f inverse is a, is a reflection of the graph of f across the line y equals x. I think you might be able to guess what that function is. It, it looks like a square root function, kind of, right? A square root function that's been shifted 3 to the left. So what, what would be the formula for the square root function shifted 3 to the left? Anyway, let, let's say we didn't know that. Here's how you find the inverse of this function. We're trying to find the inverse of f of x equals x squared minus 3, where x is greater than or equal to 0. And it's easier to use uh, y instead of f of x. You switch x and y. So you get x equals y squared minus 3, where y is greater than or equal to 0. See how I switched the y also for x? Add 3 to both sides. Now when you take the square root, you were always taught that um, you're always taught that you always have to put plus or minus, but since we're assuming y is greater than or equal to 0, we're not looking at the negative root. So this is the answer. The inverse function is the square root of x plus 3, which, was, which is what it looks like, isn't it? Suppose p of t represents the population in thousands of a small city two years after 1980. So what I want you to do is explain what each of these things mean and include units. What does it mean to say p of 22 equals 74? Well, t would be 22, so that would be the year 2002. And 74 would be the population, that would be 74,000. So you could say in 2002 the population will be uh, 74,000, right? What does it mean to say p inverse of 83 equals 34? Now be careful, p inverse would be the, the year, right? This would be the year. The, what year is this? If you add 34 to 1980, that looks like 2014. And this would be the pop population. So in 2014, the population will be 83,000 people. All righty, well, why don't you hit the pause button and see if you can, um, see if you can do these two problems. Okay, the first one says, Remember, this is, this, is, this is the hours, then. This, this right here is, is the hours. If g inverse of 72, that would give you the hours. These are the hours needed to get a 72. So that would be, it, to get a 72%, you need 14 hours of studying. Whereas this one, the hours are here, so it takes 18 hours to get an 87%. Okay, the last thing I want to do is go back to the definition of inverse function. This is kind of nice. I think you'll like, like this. Remember the definition of inverse function? Uh, f of a equals b means the same thing as a equals f inverse of b. And like I was telling you, you just think of it as switching co coordinates. So if the function is 3x, what would the inverse function be? Wouldn't it be um, x over 3, right? So what does that say? f of a equals b. Doesn't this f of a would be 3a equals b, right? That's what this would say if and only if a equals f inverse of b. What is f inverse of b? Wouldn't it be b over 3? So we're using the definition of inverse function in, in con context of these. Well, let's do another one, and then I'll have you, have you finish it, okay? If, if the inverse function is 2x over 5, wouldn't the function be 5x over 2? So using the definition of inverse, f of a, that would be 5a over 2 equals b, that means the same thing as f inverse of b. This would be, uh, or a, I should say, equals f inverse of b. So what is f inverse of b? 2b over 5. See? Anyway, so go ahead. Hit the, hit the pause button. Finish filling out this table. We'll go over it in just a minute. Okay, let's go over this then. So for the, uh, for the third one, uh, if the function is... Uh, x plus 2, the inverse function is x minus 2. So what is f of a? f of a would be a plus 2 e equals b. If and only if a equals, f inverse of b would be b minus 2. We're just using the definition in each of these cases. If the inverse function is x minus 10, that means, that means the function has to be x plus 10. So f of a would be a plus 10 equals b. If and only if a equals, what's f inverse of b? b minus 10. Last one, this is f of a. So, a has to, so f of x has to be cube root of x equals b, if and only if a equals b cubed. So f inverse of x has to be x cubed. All right, we've got to go. Bye-bye.